Welcome back to another tutorial from fm8tutorials.com and ADSR. Uh, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can do that at youtube.com forward slash ADSR toots to stay up to date with all of the tutorials we're putting out. So this is part two in a series about um, kind of how to understand and use the ratios in sound design without getting into too much of the math. Um, the math gets really complicated, like you're talking high algebra, calculus level math, when you start getting deep into the decimal places and how they react to the sound and just what's going on with frequency modulation synthesis, i.e. FM8 and FM synthesizers. So again, this tutorial is uh, part two. Part one will be uh, linked to in the description if you want to check that out. And this isn't the type of tutorial where I'm going to be jumping into like I said, all the crazy math. It's more of how I'm going to kind of run through with this tuner up that you see right here and kind of go through some of the changes with the ratio values and things like that so you can see how the pitch is reacting. Because for me personally, it's great if I can understand mathematically what's going on, but that doesn't. I've never been in a production mindset and thinking like, you know, jumping into that math world. I would much rather just think of things in a musical sense. And so that's what this tutorial series is for. Um, and I'm, I've compared some stuff to Massive because I feel like a lot of us come from a synth like Massive or Silent or uh, there's so many, a Rob Pappin synth, things like that. And th those are more like virtual analog, additive, uh, you know, wavetable synthesis. And those are a little bit more straightforward even though Massive is an extremely confusing synth sometimes because it's so in, it has so many options with modulation and things like that. But the pitch structure, at least, is pretty straightforward. So let's open up FM8. And right now I just have one operator active. And it is operator E. And that is right here in the FM matrix. It's just going into our output. So... Uh, what I was going to go over today was uh, just kind of show you how different decimal values affect the pitch. Because you may have never opened up a tuner and actually kind of like, oh, what's going on when I when I turn this up, turn that down, things of that nature. So obviously just recapping real quick, um, if you want to double, if you want to go up a whole octave, basically double your ratio. So if you're at one, I'm hitting C, and I want to go up to an octave above that C, one times, you know, two is two, so then you have your octave, If so you want to go up to uh, a, a, an octave above this C, you got to double this, so you don't go to three, you go to four, and if you want to go higher than that, double four, and you get eight, but you'll see that in the tuner that's actually playing a very sharp B and so you can see that there's stuff going on just from looking at this note that when you get really high and really low in the frequencies in FM8 things start to get detuned just by nature and that's just frequency modulation synthesis synthesis so let's just go back down to the ratio of one for this um, here's our C note. And you can kind of see, watch this, as I hit it. As I let up, there's a little bit, it kind of goes, drifts out of tune. And it takes a second for it to hit to be just right in tune. So let's move over to Massive and see if Massive does that. Let me open up the tuner I have on Massive so you can see it. So it drifts a little, um, but just showing you so that all synths will kind of drift a little in, in pitch as you hit certain notes. But if I go up by 0.1, do you see how it's, it says 1 cent right there? I went up 1 cent. If I go up 2, you guessed it, 2 cents. 
that's how massive works it's all really straightforward in in terms of the pitch change uh, when you're dealing with your oscillators but fm8 not so much so if we go from one to let's say let's just go out to the furthest decimal place like 1.0001 you think well maybe that's a cent maybe what is that let's see what it is it's kind of acting the same as it did uh, when it wasn't up so let's turn this up even more so let's go to point nine so point nine kind of kept it hanging steady at about two cents um, so you can see that if you want to just uh, really minimally affect your sound go out to these further decimal places um, and we'll go into the offset how those kind of they are doing different things but they um, this is vibrating the pitch really fast basically um, the offset is kind of just it's messing with the hertz of it so if we take this up to 1.1 you could think like okay maybe that's going up a whole step half step something right so if I play a C at 1.1 we're probably you know gonna be it's gonna be higher and it went up a whole step to D so next logically you would think at, if you were at if you were at 1.1 going to 1.2 would go up another whole step but it didn't it went just to uh, an out of slightly out of tune D sharp which is a half step up from D so you, you, you'll start to see a pattern here that if you do 1.3 now I'm at an F so it jumped from D sharp skip D it went a whole step again and then if I go up to 1.4 it went a half step so the pattern there when you're start when you're in the range of your your whole number is in the one value it goes whole step half step whole step half step and then from 0.5 up it'll just go half steps so this is helpful you're probably thinking like why in the world would I need to know this um, let's say you're trying to make a chord sound let's try let's say you're trying to stack um, different pitches in you want to make a minor chord sound it's helpful to know which one of these will give you a minor note so um, in massive it's a little bit more straightforward again because the pitch values kind of all grow up go up chromatically but so if you want to stack like a minor sixth you would go from C you would go up to uh, you don't want that far of a spread you'd go up to 1.7 so it's playing an A, and then you'd activate another uh, operator. Because now you're playing a... Um, so if we just play, let me play F so you can see that. Playing a C, and then you introduce E, which is playing the A above it, which is that minor sixth. But you'll, you'll see that the sound's a little, it's not very... It's because that A is a little bit out of tune. It's 19 cents sharp. So what you can do is you can take it back a little. So now it's pretty close in tune. And if we bring the F back in, So that's that's really cool to know those ratios if you're if you're especially if you're into like um, garage music now or um, like Chicago style you know old school type house type things um, it's kind of cool to get those stacks going on and it's kind of helpful to know where to start so just going back to one oscillator for now let's just make this a start at two so two we're still at a C so two point one would in theory um, if, if we're going off of what 1.1 did 1.1 was a whole step up from our starting note but 2.1 is just a half step um, so 2.2 I believe is another half step yeah so things start when you're in the value of 2 things will start moving more uh, chromatically by half steps so there's D so 2.4 I think is D sharp 
but it's all out of tune still. But that's significant because what it what it's showing is that even if you have the numbers down on a basic level of okay, I double this or I have this and they'll take things by octaves, when you start to get into the finer tuning and the more decimal places you're using, like I said in the beginning of the tutorial, a lot more math is going on. And with that kind of creates these differences between what you what you would expect is going to happen and what actually happens. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to just take you through in this tutorial and show you that it, it's one of those things that if you really want to get into messing with these ratios and you don't want to just dive into the math, you can just open up a tuner and kind of play around with them and see what's going on. It's more musical to me that way, and it makes more sense because these ratios the math doesn't always convert to what's happening with the pitch, the hertz of the sound, basically. Um, so if we go up to three, let's just, let me just key it in. So three, that gives us a G note, even though I'm playing C, and we covered that in the last tutorial. But if I go to 3.1, you think, okay, in the with the one value going up 0.1, went up a whole step in the two value going up 0.1 went up a half step what's three going to do it goes up a half step and so you'll start to notice that it it didn't really go anywhere it's still at that half step it's hanging um so 3.3 you know so it took two it took two decimal places up to really kind of get up to the next pitch even though it's still all out of tune and yeah, I would just play around with it um, if you really want to get into stacking chords and things like that. But more, most importantly, you're just going to be using this to kind of create thicker sounds as a whole. Um, I was just showing you that so you could get a better understanding of kind of what they're doing musically. But you, most likely you're going to have two or more operators active. And what you're going to be doing is just creating some detune. So if I play this chord... Just playing C minor. And you want to create more of a... You know, a little bit of a detune effect. That That's going to what... You're going to want to take the more of the last decimal places because the first two are going to start to really affect your tune. Um, like the pitch of it. And it's going to mess up what your starting note is. So if you just want to go for like a detune unison type effect it isn't a true unison or anything but um, you can hear how subtle and useful that can be on just one operator and you could even take that let's say you're trying to make like a thick super saw or saw sound or a pad and you have four uh, operators active and two are the main source of the sound you could have the other two be the detune have those low and then pan them down here um, you get some cool effects with that and it would help thicken up your sound so now the offset in the Hertz um, people, some people it's, it's, they act kind of like the ratios with the pitch but they're not doing the same thing to actually change like your starting point so if we go to one here see how it's just starting to get out of tune so if I go to 2, and see how it, it's it's still not going like any higher and staying higher. It fluctuates back down. So see how it's going from like 3 down, down to negative 1 and then back up. What that's doing is, to my understanding, the easiest way to explain it is it's kind of bending the pitch really, really, really fast. Um, and so... It's kind of like, I think the guy who is who discovered and kind of invented FM synthesis was messing around with vibrato, but it's happening so fast. And you can see that here. It's a good example on the tuner. It's still just going really quick up to three and down to negative. I think I saw negative two flash. So, and we'd bump that all the way up to 15. Um, and so if you did that in a synth like massive, going up anywhere you know to 15 right I'll blow up the tuner 
So I'm playing a C, and it's 15 cents out of tune. And I and you start to introduce three notes into that, and all three of those notes are going to be 15, 16 cents out of tune. It, it it'll it'll mess with your whole chord, but. So you can see how in, in Massive, that's more of a noticeable change, whereas in FM8, kind of taking that same type of... Um, and again, it's not... it's not Massive isn't... I'm not saying Massive is is uh, modulating or, or offsetting the hertz, the frequency of the hertz. Um, it's just something that you can kind of parallel it to so you can kind of get a better understanding. Because again, this is an operator. That's an oscillator. They act a little bit differently. Um, but it's just a good way, I thought, to show you guys who are maybe beginners and just starting out. Or maybe you're just one of those, you know, who just kind of play around until you get your results. But just to show you a parallel between two really popular synths that um, use completely different type of synthesis techniques. But I think it's a good way to understand uh, the parallels between the two ideas. So, yeah, again, and the offset's a great way... Again, to get detune, unison type effect, but it happens quicker than the ratio. And so I think it's a um, it's great again for pads, basses that are in those Detroit house, you know, Chicago garage type genres. Um, you can get some really great sounds in FMA from that. So that's basically it for this tutorial. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll try to get back to them. And yeah, stay tuned for more. See you next time.